Hi, everyone. Today is January the 23rd, and this is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro platform. You know, uh, I'm here a little late because it took me a minute to uh, read the news and get caught up on things. It seems to be really running all over the place. But here is the storyboard. My suspicion is that every time we end up seeing so many people rush to one side of the boat that there's a problem. And so what I'm going to say here is, yes, it is by the dip. Yes, we are headed higher. Yes, the bulls are clearly in charge. But we are stalling out, particularly in the queues, as folks seem to be absolutely just chasing everything in one direction. And that means, in my mind, they could be moving all to one side of the boat. And we know what happens to the seesaw when that type of environment occurs. All right, so what are we looking at SPY? One, we have pre-market action here. We have not breached the high of the overnight of the prior day, okay? So that's number one. First thing we say to ourselves is, hmm, am I heading higher? Guess what the answer to that is? No, I could be. And new highs beget new highs in little pockets, and then they stall out. Where's the top of the linear regression channel? Again, I mentioned it was somewhere around 490. That, um, I got to make sure my mic is off because I'm listening to another channel. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Here's the storyboard. Overnight, we had, you know, somebody saying China is going to just uh, push a bunch of stuff into the market. We had a hedge fund blow up because they were betting that Japan would move in the same direction of China. Uh, I am on serious business radio once a month. And one of the things I was talking about was how much dry powder Japan actually has if they end up trying to make their folks repatriate cash. But that's a big macro story. The bottom line is, a couple of funds blew up because of that when China dipped and uh, uh, Japan did not because they were doing some sort of weird trade there. That being said, here's what we want to stare down. Same number as yesterday. We come into 482, we need to buy it. All right. We have a higher low, so we might not get into 482. But 482.50, 482.60, that's the zone that we want to watch for. All right, let me make sure that you're seeing what's happening from the weekly perspective, still all-time highs. From a week, we are lower, but we still have not filled the gap. And so that entry into the gap is going to give us another opportunity to press to the north and then potentially start giving back just a wee bit. I do not see any crashes, but I do see the possibility for some bigger dips. So although it looks like everything's going to the moon and you might be sitting in a space where I'm saying, listen, don't get over uh, levered into this market. I am begging you, go slow right now. Take your profits where they, where they stand and then be easy with how much you lever into this market. It is a dangerous place. It truly, truly is. Upside pressure, yes, if you want to short this, you have to think to yourself, what if I lose 482.60? How's that going to look? Well, the first thing that's going to happen because of these buyers is they're going to go, you know what? Let's just try and buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. But if we can't go higher than the pre-market high, it's telling us we've got downside pressure. And the trend line is all the way down here at the last breakout zone at 478. Let's take a look at the cues. Uh, a little bit different, but... Not not by much. So let's go to the weekly, right? We can see that we're coming in, trying to fill this gap, right? Let's see if we can get the exact number on the gap event, right? 421.70. No, 421.10, right? 421. We lose that edge. We're going to see a few problems. My thought is this bounce up into a lower high and the sell-off coming. Listen, we've got some heavy hitters that are going to be reporting after the close and for the rest of this week, some really big tech hitters. If they don't bring the heat, 
and punch it up. We are going to see a reversal event in the region. And so here's my thought. If we lose the low of yesterday, buyers are going to try and first come in on a very tight time frame, and then they're going to collapse in the same kind of way that we're expecting the SPY to do. All right, let's take a look at the ES. Yes, moving to the upside here, just above the high of the prior date. Look, higher lows. Did we make a higher high so far? Well, yesterday we did, and today it's just begun. So as soon as we come into the close of the prior day, that's that 48.80, buyers are coming in. Buyers are definitely coming in. Notice, candlestick yesterday, super tight. That's indecision. And we're making higher highs away from the Keltner band. And so two things happen there. We either work off an overbought formation, staying higher for longer, or we explode higher and then collapse. Those are the two forms that we're sitting. My thought is as long as we can hold 4880, pullbacks or buy zones, if it loses 4880, then wait for 4872 and then try it again. Bullish, bullish, bullish. If you're looking for the short, remember, short Trades would be counter trend to all the time frames, and so they must be quick into a new support. They should not be long trades that you hold, especially if price begins to reverse against you. So that's what we're looking at from the ES. Let's take a look at the Qs. Same sort of thing, except we don't have a higher high that held. We actually closed lower, but today we are holding. The close of two days ago. So what's the line in the sand for the Qs? 17,491. That's where we're sitting right now. So buyers are going to try and come in there at the first pass. If they come in there at the first pass, what we're going to see is a press up into congestion above and then a decision at this 510 area. But you are definitely going to see them try and come in somewhere near this 14,000, uh, excuse me, the 17,490 zone, okay? That's it for them. Listen, be careful today. It is bullish, but there's a lot of heat. And for me, that pendulum has swung very wide. And so I have to think to myself, wow, am I looking at something that is likely to reverse? All right, I'll see you on the streams, folks. Take care.